eager to make your mark on the PTA, you decide the best way to hide eggs for the upcoming Easter egg hunt is to use NumPy. You represent the field as a 10 by 10 array of zeros. Now your goal is to insert 20 random normal values at random non-repeating locations in the grid that tell you how much candy to hide at each spot and where. Here's the solution that I came up with. Before we break it down, let me rebuild the field array. Let's start with the easy part. So we need to fill 20 eggs with a random amount of candy based on a normal distribution. So we know how to do that. We can start by building a generator and then we can say generator dot uh, normal size equals 20 and that gives us 20 random normal values. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I'll wrap this with MP dot round and round each value to two decimal places. And let's assign that to a variable called vowels. All right, so the hard part to this challenge is really how do we map these values into unique locations in the field array? So imagine that we assign a unique value to each location in this array. So we'll say uh, this is value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, and so on, up to value 99. So then our goal is to randomly select 20 values between 0 and 99 without replacement. Well, we know how to do that. We can use the choice function for that. So we can say uh, logs equals generator dot choice. And we want to sample values between 0 and 99. So we want to sample the 100 values starting at uh, index zero or value zero. We want to sample 20 values and we want to do it without replacement. Now to make this a little bit more dynamic, we can say field.size, that's the number of values in the array, and len vowels. So we want the number of locations to match the number of candies that we have. And then let's go ahead and print locs. Okay, so now we've selected 20 random non-repeating locations. So now the challenge is how do we get these candies into these locations that we've kind of just made up? Well, it turns out there's a function called Ravel, which frankly I think should have been called Unravel. And what it does is it takes a multi-dimensional array like this and flattens it into a one-dimensional array like this. And you could do this in different orders. By default, it uses row major order, which is exactly the system that we've described. So what we can do is we can say field.ravel, and let's just take a look at this real quick. So there's the flattened 1D array. And one thing to note is that in general, this does not return a copy of the field array, but it also doesn't modify it. This is a what's called a view, and we'll talk more about that later. But basically, if I print the field array, notice that it hasn't changed. It's still a 2D array. So this is just like a temporary view that we can use. So we can say field.ravel, and then we'll pass in our logs as indices, and we'll set those values equal to the amount of candy. So now if we print field, you can see that it mapped the candy amounts into these locations of the 2D array field. 